Order accepted. At BlizzCon, I was fortunate enough to interview StarCraft II multiplayer developer Aaron Kirkpatrick. Here's what he had to say about real time. That is something we are going to be trying out in the beta. Lining up the game time so it will show you real time, rather than having your watch be inconsistent with the game. However, Kirkpatrick did express some reservations about the idea. There are some tricky things about that. We want to put it in front of players and really see how does this go over. Is this something that ends up being a net positive or not? So, the fate of time in StarCraft II has been left in a major way up to us to decide. Let's take a more in-depth look at the tricky things Kirkpatrick may have been alluding to, as well as some major advantages to moving to a time system that is the same as the one in our everyday lives. For those of you who are unaware, StarCraft II time is based on what's called normal speed. When you play a 14 minute game on normal speed, it takes 14 minutes in real life to complete. However, the default speed for a StarCraft II game is faster, which is approximately 1.4 times faster than normal. If you play a 14 minute game on faster speed, it takes only 10 minutes to play in real life. What Blizzard will be testing in the beta will be something that displays real time in game, even when the speed is set to faster. So instead of the tooltip for SCV saying 17 seconds, it would say 12 seconds. Keep in mind that only what is displayed is changing. The SCV already takes 12 seconds to complete, it just says 17 seconds on the screen. With this change, a game that lasted 10 minutes would display as 10 minutes on the score screen. On the performance tab, it would show you actions per minute in the APM column instead of your actions per 43 seconds. From here, it might seem like an obvious choice whether or not to move to real time, but there are a few tricky things to consider. In the first example, I said the SCV tooltip would say 12 seconds instead of 17. What I intentionally left out was the fact that the SCV would take approximately 12.325 seconds to build. The 325 milliseconds would more than likely not display on the tooltip, just like the corruptor speed of 2.9531 is abbreviated to 2.95 in the tooltip. So if you're worried about long strings of digits entering into StarCraft, they're already there. It's just that they're hidden, and they would likely remain hidden. There's also the option of using this opportunity to round the actual build time of the SEV and all other affected units and buildings to the nearest second. This would make the statistics more transparent, but would cause slight changes in each unit and structure. These changes would likely have little to no effect on gameplay due to the following factors. Human error, network and processing delays, the economy change, and patch frequency and amplitude. Because we're rounding to the nearest second, the greatest theoretical change in a single unit's build time would be half a second. Human error and execution can very easily eclipse this at the lower levels. Just one missed worker for three seconds makes up for six theoretical workers of change. If this were the only factor, the very best players would experience a change from rounding half a second on a unit, but this is not the only factor. In addition to human error, it also has to be considered that observed time can shift between 1-3% to over a given period of time according to Liquipedia. This is said to be caused by the fact that StarCraft is built on a deterministic, synchronous game engine. I'm not going to get into what that means, but feel free to discuss the validity of that statement amongst yourselves. For the time being, I will trust the collective knowledge of Liquipedia until proven otherwise. However, the past two variables are nothing compared to what's next, the economy change. Legacy of the Void currently starts each player with 12 workers. The initial structures of each race now provide more supply to make up for the increased workers. That means that every build you know is obsolete as soon as you start playing Legacy of the Void. Supply providers will be built at different times. Expansions will be taken at different times. Strategies that didn't work before will work now. Strategies that worked before may not even be possible now. Everything will need to be recalculated and made efficient from scratch. As a result, we won't have a frame of reference to compare the new build times to. There is an argument that people can develop inner clocks that keep track of how often a worker pops out, but I think it's safe to say that there is almost no one that has an inner clock tuned so finely that the 325 milliseconds that the worker would be rounded down by could be noticed. Finally, let's talk about patch frequency and amplitude. Blizzard has described Legacy of the Void as pre-alpha, with beta to come in the first half of 2015. That means there is still tons of time for large sweeping changes to all the stats we're talking about rounding here. Like when the build time of Reactor was changed from 40 seconds to 25 seconds in Wings of Liberty Beta, a 15 second change. Or when the Reaper was changed so that the Tech Lab was no longer required to build it in Heart of the Swarm Beta, an effective 25 second change for the first Reaper. 
Not only do these changes dwarf the theoretical half second of rounding down by more than a thousand percent, but they can happen every week during beginning phases of beta and are likely changing even more often in the alpha and pre-alpha. The decision of whether or not to round ultimately comes to the question of whether or not there is a net gain. The loss is changes in statistics so minute that if they were made without telling anyone, it would be close to impossible for anyone to know, even if they got out a stopwatch and started timing things manually. The gain is knowing that the 12 second worker you just built took 12 seconds to build. They're both pretty small, so I'll leave you to decide what you care about more. On to bigger things. The main purpose of marking things by time in StarCraft 2 is to make it easier to talk about the game. DRG can play StarCraft 2 at 500 APM. That's more than 8 actions every second. Or I just played a 3 hour long swarm host game. The gas was taken 2 minutes ago, so that means I have 5 minutes until I have to start worrying about detection etc. To the initiated, an asterisk is placed above all these times that says, these times are faster than real time. Probably. But we can't know for sure unless the person we're talking to specifically says faster seconds or real seconds. This might not be a problem for most of us because we're used to it, but to a new player this adds an unnecessary complication and confusion to the game. Having the game in real time might not make a huge difference, but if we can make StarCraft 2 a little more familiar, a little more understandable, and a little easier to discuss with players and non-players alike, why not do it? The decision is largely in our hands. When Legacy of the Void beta rolls out, keep an objective, open mind, and give real time a try. Then post in the battle.net forums with your feedback. This is my wish for Legacy of the Void. Display real time. <laughs>